So if you're building an AMD based system, you really have two options to go on for the processor. You either have something from the FX lineup or something from the APU lineup. But what is the difference between the actual performance if they're basically the same chips? Well, today we're going to find out what the difference is. <laughs> Hey guys, Supermoddy here, back in that video, and yes, we are here trying to figure out what the difference is between a quad-core APU and a quad-core FX chip, and on paper, they're not exactly that much difference, but we'll get into what we actually are doing here today. Now, the FX lineup is about a three-year-old lineup of CPUs that have not received an update in, well, the past three years, whilst the APU lineup is actually receiving quite a few updates and has been updated just about every single year, so the actual newness of these products are, well, quite different. And well, the way we tested them are not different. So basically we went ahead and set up two identical rigs and ran the same test to give us the answer. And it's basically a pretty simple thing there. Now for the FX lineup representing that, that we unfortunately don't have here today, we had the FX 4300, which is a quad core CPU. And on paper, it looks very close to the AMD APU that we picked up and overall is one of the lowest end FX chips. Now the FX lineup for me personally is a little bit more oriented to the six and eight core options as they're not exactly that many quad cores on the market today. So it's more the higher end enthusiast class from AMD. You can get things all the way up to eight cores and five gigahertz with everything and well, anything in between that. For the APU lineup, we picked up the AMD A10 7870K, which we have here and you can check out in this video right there. So what exactly does it offer us that the other doesn't? Well, first off the actual uh, way it's been made, it's on the 28 nanometer node as opposed to the 32 nanometer node for the uh, FX lineup. And it's a little bit of difference. We got a hundred megahertz speed difference, but really overall they're looking on paper to be about the same chip, except on the AMD APU side, we get, well, a GPU built in. So I guess that's enough rambling about what's exactly the same about these chips. Let's go and see what system we ran with it. We paired these two chips up with 16 gigabytes of RAM and an overclocking friendly board from ASUS. We also too grabbed ourselves an R9390X for testing and a Thermaltake Water 3.0, which is their uh, triple 120 mil rad version. And we got our ourselves some icy diamond thermal compound to keep things sort of standard across everything. Every time we did any different tests, we would basically rebuild the system, replacing any thermal compound and well, doing all those kind of things to get the most sort of uh, average and trying to get the best score out of each chip. So we started off with Cinebench single core. Now, the reason why I started with this particular benchmark is I really wanted to see what performance I could get out of each core. And well, on the AMD ABU side, the 7870K, we got ourselves 66 on terms of our score. And on the FX side, we got ourselves a 90, which is actually quite a big jump. Going over the multi score, we got 250 on our little APU and 456 on our CPU. Jumping over to PC Mark, we got 4682 on the APU side with 4713 on the CPU side. But jumping into Geekbench, we actually got a little bit of a different score. They were very, very close. On the APU side, we got 6343, whilst on the CPU side, we only got got 6,346. There's like a three digit difference between each of those scores, which was actually pretty surprising seeing all the other tests. The FX chip seemed to be winning by quite a little bit. So at this point, we've done some synthetic tests and to be quite honest, we're not all running synthetic tests. We're playing video games, we're watching videos and doing video editing if we're into that stuff. So we went ahead and did some more real world stuff and we went ahead and jumped up our usual suite of games and there is our results. As you can see, they're basically the same across both CPU and GPU and yeah, there's basically no difference. In fact, they're almost the same numbers as what I got on my 980X test bench, which is a much faster chip and has better single core performance. So it does look like the games that I was testing weren't necessarily CPU bound as they were GPU bound. So we were more getting results of the 390X rather than what each CPU could actually put out. There were some other things like productivity where the CPU will definitely be a problem. So in terms of gaming, there's not exactly that much between them if you're using an external graphics cards and the games are not CPU bound. But if they are CPU bound, I'll be guessing that the FX would probably win in that scenario. But jumping into more productivity tasks such as 3D rendering and uh, video editing and those kind of things, we first started off with an Autodesk Maya test. We went ahead and created itself a small cube. We went ahead and applied XGen using groomable splines and applied 10,000 of those splines. We rendered it out and it took 30 seconds on the APU and 20 on the CPU, which was actually sort of in line 
with most of our other testers, it's yeah, the CPU is generally a lot better. Just to keep in mind, lower number in those seconds is definitely better. Jumping into Premiere Pro though, I actually found something interesting where both the uh, FX chip as well as our APU performed identical within one second of each other. So it was kind of mind blowing that whatever I got on the FX chip, I got on the APU side. So it might be just something in Autodesk Maya that's not really optimized for a certain chip or something like that. But on the Adobe side, I got exactly the same performance, but your mileage would definitely vary there. Now at this point, I guess we've tested things, we've tested games, we've tested applications, but what about overclocking? They both feature multipliers that are completely unlocked. And well, we went to town on them without trying to burn them out. On the FX4300 side, we, I was able to hit 4.7 gigahertz with a 0.08 voltage increase on the V core. And after about three or so hours of stress testing, I hit a prime 95 temperature of about 70 or so degrees, about 71 or 72, sort of bouncing between them all. We use that water 3.0 cooler and icy diamonds, as I mentioned at the start of video, to keep everything cool. And the Noctua fans that were strapped to it were set to 100% to get the most out of the cooling solution. We weren't going for the most sort of real world tests. We wanted to see how fast we could get these chips without going to something extreme like dry ice or liquid nitrogen. Jumping over to the APU side, we found ourselves at 4.8 gigahertz at the exact same temperatures with a little bit more voltage applied to it and the same amount of Prime 95 test time. So it does look like this smaller nanometer has actually gone ahead and improved our temperature output and overall did lower our total power draw when running all of those tests. So I do have to say that's a bit of a positive. If you are into power, then maybe the power draw might be up to you. I did go ahead and however and try and push for five gigahertz. The APU did get to five gigahertz, but blue screened after five minutes and the CPU was not able to go any further than 4.8. So um, I guess that's a bit of a problem there. And also too, it does again come down to Silicon Lottery. You might get an awesome uh, APU and you might get a dodgy CPU. So it really just comes down to what you get on the day. But at the end of the day, I guess the question does come down to, can you tell the difference? And is there even a difference that's noticeable that you should buy one or the other? And the answer is, well, unless you, uh, you're doing video editing or something that has a timer on it, they can actually physically see the difference. Not really. Using each one of these systems, I found it hard to keep track of which one I actually had. And overall, there wasn't really that much of a difference. Again, if you're doing 3D performance things and just stuff that is heavily reliant on CPUs, maybe the FX chip would be a little bit better. But as it is a three year old architecture, not only using more power to power it, it's just not as efficient CPU. And overall, I personally would go for the APU and take that hit in performance in the professional application side. But I do feel the FX lineup is not really the best in the quad core environment. Something like the six or eight core is definitely great value for money even three years after it has launched. So even after a three year gap, it does look like both of these chips perform just about the same. And well, if you want the best bang for your buck, I guess pick which one you want because they're definitely a lot cheaper than their Intel counterparts. The only real performance increase I guess you would get out of the APU is if you don't have a video card, you can get this straight out of the box and jump into some games. And I guess APUs are still very good value for money. Speaking of tech and learning and all those good things, Curious.com. So if you are looking for a new place to go ahead and start learning some stuff, they've definitely got you covered there. They offer hundreds of free lessons to go ahead and get you started as well as for a mere $7.99 a month, you get unlimited access to their full back library of videos. Not to mention they're taught by people like myself. Now on top of that, their library is rapidly growing, so there's always something new to learn. But for CP Mod viewers, you guys get a 20% discount when you use our code bit.do slash CP Modder. Go ahead and use that link to go ahead and visit the site or use Curious Teacher 20 at checkout. We get a kickback and you get a saving. So visit bit.do slash cpmodder or use our code Curious Teacher 20 at checkout to save 20%. So on that note, guys, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know what you would pick. Would you go for the APU that's a little bit newer that does feature the newer GPU and all those kind of things, even though you are running external graphics, or would you go down the FX lineup? Do let me know which one you would pick. Also, too, guys, give us a sub if you like what we're doing and don't forget to check out cpmodder.com for more technology stuff. I'll see you all next time for another video.